Hey y'all, it's Mooch and welcome to the new testing station. This is a follow-on video to my proposal to the vaping community. Uh, if you haven't seen that, the link is in the description. Uh, today we're just going to concentrate on some of the bits and parts that go into the testing station. And I don't have a nice gimbal set up, so things may be a little rocky. I will try to make it as steady as possible. I think we'll just go from left to right. First we've got, <laughs> that's the queue, maybe a three month queue of uh, batteries to test. Then I've got a pair of iDuo 4010 uh, chargers, just in a pair of uh, custom boxes that I, uh, plywood boxes that I had done. And then these are 3S uh, adapters up there. They're just stacked. Normally I bring one down in front of the other and do the test right now to put away. This is where the batteries are tested. These are two custom 400 watt, 150 amp electronic loads. So I can do 300 amps with these. Not with this 10 gauge cable though, I used a uh, two gauge cable. And then this is the West Mountain Radio CBA4 Pro, very common analyzer. This takes 10% of the current. These two take 90% of the current. And these run to what looks like a very janky setup, but this actually works better than a $140 and a $200 quote professional um, battery clamp that I had purchased from the battery testing companies it works great this is an eye charger 106 b plus that's what's used for charging the batteries through here this is a type k thermocouple very fast response very accurate temperature measurement coming down the blue wire to an omega digital thermometer that i can do data logging with that i usually don't do i'm just recording uh, min and max voltage now this whole thing used to be in an l shape on my other setup and I just kind of crushed it in here. So all the wires are all the wrong length. I'm probably going to take it all apart and rewire it again. But in the meantime, it's on a custom plywood box. I can tuck the cables and stuff in. Underneath is just a trinocular uh, microscope and then storage uh, parts and hardware, etc. Moving left, fire extinguisher, always a must. Not to put out battery fires, I will let those burn, but to put out anything the battery sets fire to. Next, we'll have just the usual stuff, alcohol, uh, dust off and freezer spray. Three, MPJA, basic Chinese power supplies. This is what I charge with. Zero to five amps, zero to 30 volts. These are the charging power cables over there. And uh, it, it just gives me tremendous flexibility. And moving down, I have two identical setups, one here and one here. And it's a 60 amp power supply on top matched with a 60 amp electronic load that can draw power acting as a resistor, excuse me, draw current. It can draw constant current for battery testing, or it can draw current acting as a regulated mod, a constant power discharge. Right now, that is a solid aluminum hunk that's not a battery in there. I'm testing out some contacts. You can see them at 9.99 amps. And then I have an identical set down here that I can run, so I can do two tests at a time. Uh, both of these can be under computer control. Moving to the left, a Fluke 375 FC that is a uh, ammeter where I can measure current. And then down in here, I can reach it. This is just an infrared gun that I can use for measuring temperatures. This top one is a battery analyzer. It measures the AC internal resistance, inductance, capacitance, and all kinds of nice things inside the battery. An invaluable tool for detecting whether one battery is the same as the other or uh, one battery isn't quite what they say. Down here is a micro ohm meter. Yes, millionths of an ohm. You can see right now 2.359 milli ohms. That's 0 0.002. And what it's testing is actually the resistance from the 510 threads up to the post and that's the resistance of an atomizer itself and it's used uses for mech mod voltage drop testing uh, uh, contact resistance almost anything can be tested with that because it is accurate down to millions of an ohm next down is a fluke uh, 8846 uh, meter what is astounding about this six and a half digit meter what i love about it is you can start and do things like trending plots where I can get minimum and maximum you know it's 42 nanovolts to 431 nanovolts it's just reading electrical noise now but it'll actually start plotting that out and I can look for long-term drifting I can look for minimum and maximum it's almost like an oscilloscope an astounding feature it has is the histogram where I can get 
the voltages that it goes to, the number of samples, the average voltage here is about 78 nanovolts, but also it's a standard deviation, uh, which can tell me you know, how much it drifts in and out or beyond. Without looking at big long trend plot, I can just look at the histogram. So that's incredibly valuable for voltages, current, or resistance, whatever this can measure. It can also do what they call four wire Kelvin measuring, which some of you may be familiar with or not. This is a three channel, if I can get it to focus. A three channel precision programmable linear power supply, which uh, is incredible low noise power supply, which I can use for testing circuits at their best behavior. And since it's programmable, I can have it behave very, very badly. But this essentially is electrically quiet as a battery, but it has all the programmability and stuff of another power supply, where the ones up here are very electrically noisy, just brute force power and stuff. Next, uh, storage up here. Uh, this is a DC internal resistance meter I use for a lot of uh, quick checks. This is an incredibly valuable tool. And this is something they call a logic analyzer. And using a USB connection and software and these little grabbers where I can, the little pincers on the end of here, retractable pincers, I can go in and spy on the communications between chips, like between the microprocessor in a DNA mod and the balancer chip and decode what they're saying to each other. And you can check on the algorithms for balancing. You can check on all kinds of things and how a circuit operates. Next is a laptop which runs everything, all these components here, and then a 30-year-old Fluke 87 multimeter. There's another one up here, and I like to leave this one hanging because I just grab the leads and, and take a quick measurement on the table. Next is a very handy Andon Star uh, microscope, USB microscope. And the screen is really a lot better than is coming across here. There we go. Um, this is at its lowest magnification, but it lets me check the quality of the soldering, which is not good here. But it also uh, looks at materials, and I use it for soldering myself. There's one of the Chinese supplies back there, uh, just for everyday use. This is a Tektronix uh, TBS 2000 series scope, just the 100 megahertz, two channel one. I don't need really high bandwidth, 300, 400 megahertz. This has incredibly deep memory, so I can store 14 million samples to let me analyze signals. Right now, it's just looking at electrical noise in blue, no connection on, on it, and then a square wave for calibration. Uh, it's all you need for doing anything involving mods and looking at regulated mods and outputs and stuff like that. Coming a little bit further to the right. Whoa, trying to get cables out of the way. Here we just have jumper leads, storage on top, jumper leads, more leads. Here's the, uh, just the everyday tools that I use when I'm doing kind of work, I can just bring this out and put that thing up on top here in front of the scope. And I just took a piece of plywood, drilled a million holes in it. What I'll probably do is get a piece of laser cut acrylic and just, it's all hot glued together. Just smash that apart and put the laser cut acrylic into it. Coming across, we now have a keyboard drawer, which I use. This laptop is used to run this system down here. And so it's easy just to open it up, run the tests. And then when I'm not running battery tests, I can just put everything in there. And then different storage. This over here is an isolation transformer with the workbench test bench modifications made to the grounding strap. That's how you keep your oscilloscope grounds from exploding if you make the wrong kind of connection when testing something powered by AC, like a wall ward or something. Coming over to the right, this is an Oki PS900 soldering iron. It's fantastic because you would never adjust the temperature. Uh, incredible unit. Expensive, but they're incredible. Uh, a cheap $100 hot air station, additional storage, one of the five power strips and more storage. And that is the new test station. Things will probably be moved around, tweaked, play with as I get more experience on it. But right now, like I don't have a real, don't have a, a real home for the Andon Star uh, USB microscope, I just put that away. But right now, that's what I'm using for the new testing. Thank you for watching.